Long time no see, everybody. This is entirely my fault um, for not being here for so long. But uh, welcome to the stream, guys. Uh, hey, Sarah. Uh, yeah, I still get ads. Um, just gonna open up my uh, ZBrush real quick. Uh, I want to actually thank uh, Rev Riv for for the follow. Appreciate it, man. Uh, let me know if the audio and anything is is a little messed up. It's been a while since I've streamed, so um, just need to make sure everything's all good here and there. Oh, of course, there's an update for ZBrush. <sighs> Should have clicked on that earlier. That's fine. It's not a big deal. I'll do it later. Uh, all right, we're gonna need on this guy up. All right, he's up. Not working in the voice chat. Okay. All right, give me one second, Pete. I wonder if it's the. Me check the permissions. It might be the permissions. Oh, yep, there it is. That's why. Try it now. Actually, go to the voice channel. There we go. I hear you now. You're a little quiet, but I hear you. Okay. Sorry for the technical uh, difficulties here, guys. <laughs> yeah, I hear you now, Pete. Oh shit! I have pushed the talk on. That's my bad. Yeah, I have pushed the talk on so that way, um, when I start saying stuff in the in the chat, that way it's not gonna affect you or anything. All right. No, I got you. I was actually uh, the chat over here is a lot louder than the chat in the uh, in Twitch, so. Yeah, it just like totally different. Yeah, I might actually. I might because this is coming through my headset, so I might have to turn you down just a little bit on here. Then there, there, that should be better. That way, you're not overpowering anything. Uh, let me know if uh, Pete's a little too loud here, guys. That way, he's not. You know, the audio for from his side isn't overpowering. The audio is coming through my headset, so the music and stuff like that you hear is not coming from my speakers, it's going through this as it's being mixed in between, so. Something went wrong. Oh my god, really? Oh, what happened? What happened, music? <laughs> Pretzel Rock is kind of messing up on me today. Ah. <sighs> On pretzel rock. Maybe we find some. Usually, I listen to. Uh miracle of sound on pretzel rock but apparently it's not working properly so i guess we'll have to change some stuff up here okay so you muted yourself on discord right yeah i'm using push to talk on discord hopefully 
that's not gonna. I need to put my headset on. I'm trying to find some chill music and stuff to throw on here. Music a little bit better, guys. Seeing as miracle, seeing as the music for Miracle Sound wasn't working all that great. All right, so uh, I've been kind of working on this here uh, for a little bit now. It's a so what I'm I'm planning on. I'm a little low. Okay. Um, That better? Need to adjust this anymore. I don't want to turn this up too much. Is that any better? Just trying to knock out the little technical difficulties here, guys. <laughs> Making sure everything's set properly. That's weird. Sarah, how am I coming out on your end? Discord is fine. That's weird. Um, like, too loud in Discord. That's weird. Um, let me check my properties. Yeah, it's going through my, my mic properly. Should be going through that like it should. I'm not hitting very high in the decibels. I'm hitting it like I'm around 20. Like I'm in the green still. It's kind of weird. I wonder if your headset might be a little low there, Pete. <laughs> Or something. Something's going on in your end there, Pete. <laughs> Thanks for the input there, uh, Reb. Thank you. I appreciate that for giving some feedback. Definitely helps. Alright, so... Just to give you guys some context. This this thing that I'm working on here, this is... Uh, it's a character... I have my audio at 50% for both. Ah, okay. That's weird. Um, so what I'm working on, um, originally me and Pete here were kind of like trying to figure out, uh, I had this idea of creating a pen stand, right, for, for a Wacom pen, right? But I also wanted it to be kind of like a statue. Um, now, don't get me wrong, this is kind of the first time me doing this. Normally, I am a... I work for, I, I work with uh, creating video game characters and stuff like that. I'm not in the industry, just so you guys know. For anyone that's new to the, new to the stream, I am not in the industry. I am mainly still, uh, I'm trying to still get in, I'm trying to get in the industry. But, it doesn't stop me from trying to actually keep pushing myself a little bit. Uh, kind of took a really long break, not really my intention. I had a lot of, uh, demotivation these last few months so it's it's been kind of hard for me to like sit down and actually do some work so but um i had this idea of wanting to do this really epic creature uh for a pen display that you can like or not a pen display a uh, statue that you can literally stick your your wacom pen in and you know it'd be something kind of cool to have like don't get me wrong i have the little dongle here for my wacom pen that you just slide in and it just clicks right into my tablet but Kind of wanted something that was that was mine, you know, something that I wanted to create that would be have a little bit of my own flair to it. Um, I love creature design. That's the one thing I love the most. I have a lot of fun doing creatures. I have a lot of fun doing monsters and stuff like that. 
Um, if you look at my art station, you'll see my more recent one that I did. This was like at the beginning of the year, and that was my interpretation of SCP-939. Really fun creature. That was a lot of fun. So this time around, I'm trying to think of... Um, me and Pete had this idea of doing a fantasy creature for this stand, right? So it was an idea where as as I was playing around with the idea more in my head and what I wanted for the pose and how I wanted the creature to be, I started getting this idea of it being a creature that can camouflage itself in a forest. It's it, in not in a typical way. You know, most most creatures you see, you know, they have like vegetation and or um they can camouflage itself with like skin tone stuff like that you know like the chameleon and stuff like that that's not necessarily what i wanted to do with this creature i wanted this thing to actually look vaguely different um in the sense that originally i was going to do it as a there's a few options i had one of them was it's more in the family of like a tree folk or an ant or um uh like a tree-based creature. It was made out of plants and stuff like that. That initially has changed into, and then my uh, next idea was, why don't we do it more of a reptilian or a predatory creature that has armor or uh, hardened bone around it that could simulate uh, like bark. Like it has like, armor on it that kind of looked like bark right so that it could hide in trees inside inside of hollow trees so that if an animal or a prey potentially can comes out comes near it it can spring out and grab it and start feasting on it that initially changed <laughs> so i'm always trying to find uh resources and whether it be real world reference or concept art that other artists have created you know and then mixing the two so like i took inspiration from a lot of creatures here so uh, from a lot of animals and creature designs that i've i've kind of initially drawn inspect uh, inspiration from um to give you guys some some ideas like this is my pure ref right now this is my pure ref board right now so i have a few references here i have creatures from remnant from the ashes which are these are the root these are initially creatures that are primarily made of just plant life um if you've ever played remnant from the ashes which is made by gunfire games um it, it's a roguelike game these these creatures were really cool i really loved playing against these things because like they're a little different you know it's they're not your typical enemy um, then I have some other tree folk like inspiration here. This one is from uh, Graphite Nightmare on Pinterest. Not Pinterest. Uh, Instagram. Sorry. Um, this guy, he does some really awesome stuff. I really love his work. And when I saw this, I was like, dude, I, I, I kind of want to pull some inspiration from this. Um, but that was originally with the whole plant life creature design that I was planning on doing. So this might be this these whole ideas may be scrapped but we'll see um then i have some concepts from uh, Steve, uh i think it's stephen oakley if anyone's familiar with him he, he's done all, so much concept art in the industry um these are some of his pieces from evolve for behemoth which is a rock based uh creature that you could play in evolve um, this is kind of where I got some of my inspiration from recently with the whole armor base. The armor plating will be kind of more like bark. Now, Behemoth is based on like he's this giant hulking gorilla like creature that can roll up into a ball and he has a lot of rock based magma attacks. That's what his character was based on. And I kind of really like the idea of like how the armor, how the rock armor and stuff like blend you know covers a lot of his vulnerable areas so i kind of kind of have this idea of wanting to do something similar to that with this creature um a couple of other tree based kind of creatures uh this was from one of those uh uh 
uh, 3D prints that I saw recently. I saw this actually this original design on Facebook not too, a long time ago this year. Really love this cre this design. But again, this was like another inspiration of like if it was made of tr of trees. Um, this creature I found on ArtStation. I don't remember the artist, but um, it's in my it's in my ArtStation. I'll have to look it up. But uh, this is kind of something that inspired me as um, using camouflage and having uh, the environment used on the character again. Um, this was a character that I found, I think, on ArtStation or on Pinterest. I don't remember. This was actually a couple weeks ago when I started doing all this. Uh, this was one of the giant worm-like creatures from Maleficent, one of the, the guardians during the, the attack there. This is another concept art for this character here. Uh, some more Stephen Oakley designs. This is from... Uh, what is this called? This is the... Tetzel Worm. It's called the Tetzel Worm from God of War. Yeah, the Tetzel Worm is actually a Greek... Not a Greek. A uh, uh, Scandinavian uh, uh, cat, cat snake, basically, is how it's described, essentially. Um, really, I love this design um, of the tetzel worm it's such an interesting creature especially when you see it in god of war uh this thing literally it, it crawls cr crawls it burrows underground and then it'll pop out and, and try to lunge at you such a cool design oh okay well i i have pushed the talk on so that way i'm not when i'm talking in the chat i'm not bombarding you as well um and then i have my real world um this was one of my early rough sketches of like what i was thinking about doing for pose and stuff like that same thing with this one initial rough sketches from the side from the front um this was pete's sketch of what he was thinking of well because me and him were doing ideas of like how the pose could be and stuff like that this is just a rough sketch from him this is another design I saw from Pinterest. I really loved how, like, this this design really kind of, like, inspired me with how I'm thinking of the character being a bit. Um, some real-world reference of the plant life, you know, bark and wood and stuff like that. And then some real-world re reference from the animals. <laughs> Showing your horror sketch. Dude, mine is no better. Come on, what are you talking about? <laughs> I haven't drawn in like a while. <laughs> so it's my my sketches are not that great anymore. <laughs> but uh these are some real world references that I used. Uh we have a Gaboon Viper, which is actually one of the most deadliest vipers of South America. Terrifying creature. This thing has like the most has one is one of the first not one of the first, but one of the vipers that has the longest fangs. Like they are these things are huge and and in some cases, they have, like, double fangs. They'll have, like, the main one and then a secondary one kind of back behind it. It's gnarly. Um, the guys here are... What are these called? Uh, mole lizards. Mexican mole lizards. Um, the original design kind of sprung from kind of how the tetzel worm is. It, originally, I had this idea of it being a, a worm, a W-Y-R-M. So, a snake-like dragon. That initially was the idea for the design. But as I thought more... And then these right here, these two lizards are the... Uh, the leaf-tailed gecko. I have I have my notes right here of what I have what I was design, thinking of. Uh, so these are leaf-tailed geckos. You know, the leaf-tailed gecko is really interesting because it's... It's camouflage literally resembles that of of real leaves and the same thing for um what are these I, I know i looked these up before but i don't remember what these are but i think these are like leaf mantis or something like that forget their actual name it's i never wrote it down which is sad because <laughs> i think when i was looking for leaf tail geckos these guys also popped up and it was like oh that's actually a cool idea so a lot of their inspiration is kind of pointing me toward what I want to do with this character. 
instead of pointing it toward more toward reptile, I'm kind of pointing it more toward insect. Um, mainly because, like, in my head, I thought this idea of it being a creature that can hide within hollowed out trees or it could, like, rip apart a tree and make it its home initially started actually bringing more inspiration to the character and made me want to do it more um so that's kind of where we're at with this character so this right now is the initial design that i have but uh we are very like we're we're gonna change some things here we're gonna change some things so a delay right i forgot about that good point pete all right there we go that's better all right so let's okay, start cool. figuring some stuff out with this guy yeah there was a little bit of a delay so i didn't want to like talk over you yeah i get that So this was so this was another head design that I had for this guy as well which initially this was actually the design I was going to go with and go further with but as soon as I kind of want to do something else what do you have um, like polygroup wise polygroup wise yeah right here for the head. It's not a part of it right now. Oh, okay. The other one is. So, currently it's not connected, but this is the polygroups right now. Well, I meant for the head. Okay, so it's all just one poly group. Yeah, for now, yeah. Okay, okay. I haven't, I, like uh, I haven't separated it yet. Gotcha. Yeah, I like that style. What was the other one again? The other head. It's more of a longer snout. Is it going to be more of a uh, elongated character? I mean, I kind of like the snub nose. I kind of had, like, I'm thinking about kind of adding some insectoid to it a little bit. Not mainly in the hands are where I really want it. And I'm cut, like, part of me is just this, this idea of. The, just the, the mandibles, the extra mandibles from the face is just what's really grabbing me here. This yeah. thing, like, like in my head, I'm imagining this thing, like, you know, seeing it kind of sprawl out its arms, and then you see the mouth just sprawl out is just, like, literally how I'm envisioning it at this point. It's... But then, yeah, like, I, I thinking about it, it's like, okay, how do I take this and break it up a little bit is where I'm starting to think okay how do we break this up and make it into mandibles so well don't get too far though you know get your base in there first right you know before getting into the, like even the medium details
Yeah, I'm like super stoked about this Alembic export though. Yeah, I'm real curious to see how all your sh your stuff is going to come out, man. Did I send... I don't know if I sent you the... Uh... So for anyone that does that's not familiar, uh, Pete is go currently going... Th uh, currently actually going back to Animation Mentor to, to finish his, uh, his courses out. So uh, if anybody has any animation questions, shoot him some questions. What, are you trying to make me work? <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> hey, man, if I'm going to be doing some work here, might as well do some work over there, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> right, um... No, I, I actually just got off work about 45 minutes ago, so it's all good. Oh, that's good, then. Just thinking how... But yeah, that, that last one that I sent you... That last image, I think, is about as far as I got. Uh, hard to tell. Let's see. No, there is an update because I went through and I tweaked the. Uh, some of the skin texture and the yeah. hair texture so i used a curves or not curves color ramp and basically made a black and white so i could pump that into the subsurface and into the uh, spec and all that So there's the result compared to the last one. So you can see it makes a lot of difference, especially around the eyes. Because the cheeks feel a little more like secret. Oh, shit. That's not what I want to do. But as far as around oh, the no, yeah, that's eyes what I themselves, there it's a lot more, uh, you know, kind of like sunken in and less spec or less uh, subsurf. Pull it up on my uh, other screen here so I could get a better look at it. That actually looks really good, dude. For anyone's cu really? anyone that's curious, what uh, Pete's working on here, this is what he's been working on. That I, I like how that's coming out, man. Like I can actually see coloration in the character. Yeah, you see what I mean about the cheeks versus the eyes. Yeah, like you actually see like his eye, like there's actual depth there with the right with the where the eye socket is and even the gray around his uh his, where his beard and stuff would be you know having like almost where it looks like he has a uh five o'clock shadow like that that looks really awesome that's actually in the uh diffuse map really so that's painted in awesome but it, it, as far as like if you really look at the pores like I went through and with the skin texture, I also created like a little bit of bump with the skin. So you get some of the detail. Yeah, it's actually coming out pretty good, man. I really like that. I appreciate it. All right, let's get, let's get some eyes in here so we can get some Like I said, I'm having a lot of fun with this one. Well, I talked to the Pratt brothers basically to see how I could go through and export the animation from the DSLR that's in this uh, last shot. 
and actually get that animation correct and in the right place. Yeah. And it's like stupid simple. So I should be able to get the other one and uh, start going through and putting some of the textures and things like that on that. But this one I'm super excited about because I really love the look of it. I think it's going to make a real good addition to the progress wave. Did you find one of the holders for the uh, styles? Yeah, yeah, I got one in here. Yeah. It's to this import one. in. Yeah, it's this one right here. I uh, gotcha. Obviously, I'm not going to use this whole thing. It's yeah, mainly just going to use like this section here, like around here. Like I can literally go in there and uh, yeah, I wouldn't even bother with that. I mean, really, you could just smooth the outside of it. This is it. Uh, I just realized that hmm. it's, de it's decimated. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed that. Yeah, you just dynamesh it. Yeah. I think this is gonna look really good though. Actually, there we go. It's pretty clean. That is at five million polys right now for this particular piece. But yeah, but at I least mean, it keeps as that. long as it's watertight, that's all that matters. Right. And do you have a three D printer out there? No, I don't. You want me to three D print it for you? You want to do a test of it? Sure. Um, that's not a problem.
is thinking of getting rid of this stuff here and then doing a Z remesh on, or not a Z, yeah, a Z remesh on this part of it, I think, might be the best solution. And then maybe extrude it out. Just make an IMM brush. then that way if you store it and save it as your brush then anytime you want to make a different folder then you can have it in there initially did it anyway yeah you can just cut that top though and then use uh, the uh, Z modeler You know, sometimes looking at Blender and like the power of it and all that stuff, there's sometimes I wish that we were, uh, you know, doing more animation in it. Yeah, I can definitely understand that for sure. Because there's certain parts like with the viewport shading where I didn't see some stuff in Maya. The viewport shading in Blender, it's like blatantly obvious. <laughs> so I'm looking at it like, ah, no. Like there's just enough head movement to where it's uh, intersecting with the jacket that I didn't see previously. at it you know in the blender viewport just to make sure that it's not intersecting anywhere
anybody uh, see today that Tencent bought Turtle Rock Studios? Did what? Did what? Apparently, uh, sometime today, uh, Tencent, the uh, company has been buying out like just about every game studio. Um, they ju they recently bought the parent company of uh, uh, Turtle Rock Studios. Hmm. The guys who did uh, Left 4 Dead and the new Back 4 Blood and stuff. Interesting. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> like Tencent's been buying out so many companies lately. There's been a lot of like companies buying other companies. Yeah, especially like the one with uh, ZBrush currently. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of people that are freaking out about it. Like, oh my god, it's going to be the end of ZBrush kind of crap. And it's like nothing's actually been said what's happening. So don't freak out. <laughs> Well, I mean, they did say that perpetual licenses, things like that, were going to persist and, you know, all that stuff. I mean, that was my biggest concern is, you know, for me personally, I don't want to go to a per month license. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure nobody does. It's not fun. It's not fun for anybody. Yeah, and I, I definitely like the fact that I have the uh, perpetual license from like R5 or R3. And, you know, back then it was three updates for life. I don't know if they're going to continue the grandfather clause on that. Yeah, that's definitely going to be. I'm sure they'll work something out. Because, like, I think that's going to be the, that's the one thing that everyone loves about ZBrush is the fact that it doesn't, they don't really screw us over in a lot of ways, you know, like how, right. like how Maya does and stuff like that. Like, sure, they ask for a pretty big price tag for ZBrush, but it's worth it. Like, if you buy it outright, that's worth it keeping, you know, having that yeah. license. But even having, but if you can't afford that big price tag, having the perpetual license isn't a bad thing. But having the options is is always right. a good thing. So I'm hoping that it doesn't, you know, them changing, you know, going to this, you know, going to this new company and stuff. It's not gonna screw anything up. Like I'm not really familiar with Cinema 4D. I've never used it. Um, I've used it back in the day. I mean, Cinema 4D, there was, uh, what was it? Their version of basically texture painting. Um, God, that was so long ago. But they had their own texturing software and things like that. I mean, it wasn't bad. I think I was using that about the same time I was using, like, or learning XSI, uh, Lightwave, and all that stuff. Right. Okay, I'm definitely liking this. Okay, I definitely like this shape. This is actually kind of keep, it looks reptilian, but still has a bit of insect I'm, I'm definitely liking that I'm definitely liking it so far now granted these aren't details these are just like these are where the mandibles and stuff are going to be how it's going to be connected to the face so details. <laughs> they're not details it's still low you you you're, do you just see what they are mm -hmm. <laughs> 
that's far more detailed than i mean you should have like the body and everything done before getting to that point just my opinion A lot of the po a lot of the the actual structure is gonna stay the same. Um, I think the you mean are gonna make it more dynamic. Well, yeah, I'm gonna, but this is this is just yeah. blocking it out, blocking out everything that I need. So this one might actually change, to be honest. Arm structure is probably gonna change. I'm gonna change the hands. I kind of want How them to be How low are you on that? On? On the hands and arms and stuff. On your poly count. That's 15,000. That's 1,000. So each of these here are 1,000 are here. Okay. Arm is 33. Upper arm is 37, and the shoulder is. So 17. you're kind of getting away from the uh, low poly blocking. Um, I actually. Well, no, I'm not. It's I did start off low poly, mm -hmm. and then I started uh, adding all my details. I merged everything together. No, I may not get rid of it. I may just split it, to be honest. Because that shoulder is looking a little flat, too. Yeah. Originally, I was going for more uh, reptiles, so I'm actually, I'm actually going to change a lot of this here. Yeah. looking at your silhouette and stuff.
always has to be so. God. Fucking damn it. What's the problem? Ugh, sorry for the swear, guys, but oh my god, I hate my life. This is why I hate how this system is. This is the one change I wish they would fix. They would, or not really fix, but change. Just go back to your auto save. <sighs> Hopefully it's there. It is so late. Like it didn't do an auto save recent. That was irritating. Ugh, it's the one thing I hate about Zebra, it's just like, is the permanent deletion of something, which really sucks. Yeah, but just always make sure that you duplicate your tool before doing anything. The thing is, I didn't realize I was on the thing that was being deleted. Yeah. Man, I hate it when that happens. Yeah, but I mean, repetition is practice. Yeah, like all that progress I just had in the face is literally gone. Good practice.
find it and it's roll Sarah. Usually I get like some kind of a notification I thought. Yeah, I had it set up where it does ads every like I think hour. Okay, yeah, I have it where it has ad breaks every hour. Just to kind of, you know. Yeah, it's just it's just like once an hour. Like every hour, it'll just do it once an hour. So that way, like we've only been going for, yeah, it's just been an hour so far. So it just does another one here once in a while. It was supposed to give me a notification, but I think I have to be in the the other side of it, I think, in the creator dashboard, I think. I think that's where it'll give me the uh, notification, I think. supposed to give me a notification but I guess it didn't do that that's eh, whatever whatever works all right
think I have just about everything taken care of here. Yeah, I can definitely tell you that the shading in Blender viewport is so awesome. That's good. I really wish it might have had that feature. I mean, I know they have the ambient occlusion and stuff, so... I mean, just the quality that you get in the Blender viewport really makes it stand out when there's things intersecting and all that good stuff. Which makes a huge difference.
know, I'm almost tempted to throw one of the uh, metahuman textures on this for the bump. Yeah. <clears throat> it's built into the model but there's this one single strand of it that will stick there. <laughs> Braces it.
this place. One of my issues I'm having is the scale because everything is this size this yeah. of this particular of these objects here that yeah. when I go to like I can't increase my brush size anymore so it's actually kind of hindering what I'm able to actually affect I know there's a way to fix that This. Like, I, mean, I want to be able to get, get this huge. <laughs> I mean, you could always do a uh, scale master. Like, I even read uh, Z remeshed it so that way I could. So there wasn't so much information to work with. Yeah, but that's why I told you to go with the other process of blocking it out. Initially, I Just was, that. but then everything kind of... I didn't realize that everything was being affected because it was about that same size. Yeah. Hey, how's it going, man? How's it going, Hunter? about restarting the actual uh, initial block out a bit. Awesome, awesome. How's that been going for you? That's good to hear, man. Also, I've been using a, uh, a YouTube, kind of like live music streaming for my uh, streams, and none of my streams get flagged. I've been keeping an eye on that. 
wait that on Twitch? Yeah. Oh yeah. See that's the thing, you gotta be careful with using YouTube videos for music. Because well, no, I'm I'm saying it's a live stream of music. Right, that's what I mean though. You gotta be careful with those because sometimes those some of them may not initially be uh they originally were would be open source for us to use but then they eventually get signed off to going for a company like those artists will go over to a company and then they take that music and it's not updated on youtube sometimes it happens eh, either way yeah it happens just um, like that's kind of why I like using Pretzel Rock. Cause I like it too, but when it puts up all the, you know, now playing garbage. Yeah, that's the only problem. Like, like I like Pretzel Rock. Other aside from the whole fact that it's like, um, you have to pay to get the. the full aspect of the service where you don't have to worry about it saying hey you're playing this but the thing right. is the only reason it does that the only reason it does that is so that you don't get screwed over in twitch and youtube you know it's it's their system's way of saying hey they're allowed to use this because this is the, they're crediting it this is us crediting it so that they don't have to worry about it which sucks but i get i get why they do it yeah. It's just a built in safeguard. Okay. Can I please? to the point of adding audio to this. and just make copies of them. Yeah. All right. Put it all in a separate folder, duplicate the folder. Thank you. 
one sec, team. Definitely did not fix my problem. What are you trying to do? So I can actually have a bigger freaking brush. Like. Like I said, I think it was something with Scale Master or something of that nature. Oh, yeah, maybe. Where is it at? It should be. Is that plugin? Yeah. Z plugins. Are you duplicating your sub tools before you do that? hate for you to go ahead and rescale it and <laughs> have more of an issue.
Okay, I think I fixed it. Did I fix it? Yeah, so what I had to do is I had to go to ZBrush Scale Unify. You click on that and it sets it back to the ZBrush standard. Cool. I think you, because this was defaulted at one, so I up these to two mm -hmm. as well. Because it says here, ZBrush works best with sub tools at the max. XYZ size of two. This will unifies your, unify your scene for ZBrush usage, keeping existing scale. So now I can, now I can have my gigantic brush size. There we go. That actually <laughs> helps. Thank Christ. Okay. Okay. That fixes a lot of my problems I was having though. Cool dude. Is all updated. There you go. Well, I say he's all updated. I got to his eyes. Yeah, there we go. And that's all using, you know, setting everything to the UDIMs? Fixing the UDIMs and nope. uh, Blender? No. Nope. No? The only thing UDIM really is on the skin. Yeah, that makes sense. And okay. the vest was supposed to be UDIM, but there was like two sections on the vest, one that wraps around the waist, and one up top. The one, the way that they had it set up, like, I don't know why or what the difference is between Maya and Blender, but so when I go to import one of the images from Maya, it's actually just one big image. So that's kind of a pain because Blender actually uses different images per item. So when I converted that, it was having an issue importing the images. So I just set it to a single image and then Honestly, I just went through with the bottom part and made it a similar color and just the standard procedural texture. I mean, it's solid, so you're not really going to know the difference. Right, right.
here, man. Ah, just my ear itching. Just gets annoying. I don't like that actually. Button. Yeah, it's my uh, my phone just vibrating. Gotcha. Yeah, like I said, I think I'm gonna use this process a lot more. After adding the eye materials, I'm calling this good. Thank you. 
here's a question for everybody. Um, you no, because I just thought of my, I just popped the in my head actually. Crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just by, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare the shit out of you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting here focused, nice and quiet. <laughs> Gotta love those moments. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what I wanted to say was um, has anyone gotten a chance to see Arcane yet? On Netflix, the League of Legends series. Anyone gotten a chance to watch it? I know I've been focused this whole time. I figured I'd start doing some talking here. <laughs> Apparently. I managed to watch it some time ago and uh, I really enjoyed it it was definitely like I'm not a league player at all but I'm kind of familiar with some of the characters backstories a little bit um, what was the uh, game or what League of Legends the game is uh, wow. that Arcane is based off of um, like I'm familiar with some of the characters and some of their backstories but um Arcane is a series like Riot is pushing to like expand their universe than just the game itself uh, which I have no problem with if they're if they're will if they have good studios and good people working on it then I definitely and they're able to execute it then hell yeah but uh like I'm sure you probably saw a bunch of stuff on our on uh, ArtStation and uh, LinkedIn recently on Arcane because like there's I've been seeing so many people post their work on it. Um, Who, me? It, yeah, you. Um, I've seen a little bit. I haven't really been on LinkedIn that much, honestly. Well, I say that I haven't been on Facebook that much either been on LinkedIn more than Facebook. But yeah, I, I actually... I think there was one post a couple days ago. And somebody doing some fan art, but I think that was... Uh, it might have been Arcane. I've been seeing a lot of people do fan art, but like, yeah. Um, well, I don't know if this was one of the actual modelers or what, but right, right. Um, I think you can actually see a lot of the art, the actual monitors on like ArtStation more than anything. Uh, but I've been seeing so much stuff on Arcane lately. You know, people people have been so inspired by the series to, to yeah. create their own work like i actually just saw marcus uh the guy who does mw creative um he did his rendition of echo who is one of the characters from the from the series it's really good a really really awesome design that he did for echo Like they, they had some really awesome actors in that series uh, portray everybody. Mm -hmm. Like the art style is is even better because it's like it's a it's a mix mash of like cell shaded and comic. While it's all three D, it's all done in three D. It, it looks so good. I'm wondering if they're using uh, Blender for that. And the only reason I say that is because Blender has a really, really nice uh, cell shading. It's possible. But I also, I also know that Joe over at uh, So Much Monsters, he actually had been working on uh, 
it was substance and doing like a cell shaded look it's possible like it has like i'm not sure what they use to work on it um but it, it's it looks so good the um the way they portrayed uh jinx and and vi was so good jinx like especially is the one that he did oh really yeah, yeah a lot of people have been doing jinx <laughs> a lot of people have been doing like fan art of of jinx and stuff like that um, like I, said, I don't know if he was uh like just doing fan art or if he actually worked on it but yeah it was pretty well done yeah, i know it was a french studio that worked on it at least that's what i've heard it's some studio in either in france or just a company that could be in canada or something um to be honest who knows really because like yeah well I to mean, be honest i was kind of expecting it to bomb <laughs> like most oh, like, like there was most a lot of push on. behind it though yeah i like the thing the thing actually i'm really appreciative is is you know how a lot of films or series are like oh yeah we're work with the developers no they worked with the developers you can tell because otherwise like it riot's very very protective of their characters you know yeah. and they wouldn't allow anyone to mess with it if if they didn't feel they could actually portray the world accurately speaking of that have you seen the new warframe uh cinematic yes i just re-downloaded warframe so i could play through it <laughs> Oh my god. Dude, I am so behind though. Like I told Sarah because of because of the new of the new story stuff, apparently, cuz I actually mm -hmm. found this out cuz I went on I logged into my Warframe this morning. They actually popped up saying it actually has a message saying if you start the new war campaign quest stuff, you are locked into it. You cannot do any other Warframe stuff. You are right. locked in right, until right. you complete it. Yeah. And it's like, "Oh." <laughs> And apparently they said it will take several hours to complete. Yeah. You haven't gotten through the new war yet? No, I haven't. Dude. Like, to be honest, I forgot that it released. You need to get through the new war. Uh, wow, that was a lot. Well, it's been it's been a long time since I played Warframe. Yeah, because you don't have Harrow, do you? No, I don't. Yeah, because you get Harrow through the New War, or the Red War, or something like something that. Something like that. Because he's one of the prerequisites, I think. Like, I'm so behind. The last thing I actually did in Warframe was... I want to say the Second Dream was the last thing I did. Oh, yeah, you're behind. I'm way behind. But if you want help, let me know. Well, that's the thing. No, like, I'm I, I think. But that's, I think they, yeah, because they added cross save. I think, right? Uh. Like the, I know that I don't. Or is there cross play? What were they doing? Or is it both? Because I'm, cur I'm curious now. I don't know if they added crossplay. Um, I know they talked about it. This was at TennoCon when they talked about it. Cause that, cause I know they talked about previous TennoCon. I think it was this year's TennoCon. I thought they talked about it. Mm -hmm. Because they, they showed off it being playable on Switch. Gotcha. Um, yeah, during TennoCon 2021, developers did a stream. 
uh, revealed that cross save and cross play are in development. So, okay, so it's not out yet. Okay, so yeah, it's not out yet. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, supposedly, it supposedly people are expecting it to come out next year, which wouldn't it, wouldn't put it put it past them to be honest. Um, they're usually pretty pretty good about getting stuff done. Like the only reason everything's been so you know lack you know lacking this last year was because COVID. These well, last couple of years because of mean, COVID. This last year. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> So I kind of understand where they're where everything is right now. Yeah. Like they actually like I when I was reading the patch notes for what was added um cuz they added in a new warframe, a, the, the sentient mm -hmm. warframe and his weapons. Oh, they Dude, since you've played, they've added a lot. Yeah, they've added so much. It's ridiculous now. Like, <laughs> there, there's so much stuff that has been added. Like, I am so behind. But I think, like, a lot of the reason I stopped playing was because of just the grind got to me. You know, after a while, it's like, uh... But they, they've, they've made so many quality of life improvements to to the grind itself of getting Warframes and stuff like that, that it's, it's not as bad anymore from what I've seen. No, and the fun thing is, like, if using, depending on the quest, but using uh, Octavia, yeah. Octavia, I mean, it doesn't matter. That frame is broken. <laughs> like, like, I've seen no, a few seriously. of them that are pretty broken. Like, Octavia is broken as hell, because you can literally, I have a video I'll share with you, but basically I took Octavia because you know she can do invisibility, mm -hmm. she can do speed, she can do uh, AoE, I mean pretty much like Anything and everything is controlled by her. And it's isn't Octavia just... the one that isn't Octavia the the music one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, not only is it controlling like the visibility, the speed, the increase to damage, uh, like all of that that not just to her but it also goes to the team too right so it's like it it's so broken <laughs> i mean i love playing her but uh like we'll go in and we'll do a uh what's that mission it was the mission on the void or in the void and we would go in there we would have Octavia Harrow and uh, oh, what's the there was the gunslinger Mesa Mesa Octavia Harrow and Mesa absolute destruction mace has always been overpowered ever since she was first introduced <laughs> well no because <clears throat> all right so octavia does aoe and you can extend that out to being absolutely ridiculous plus she has the hammer which basically anybody that does or the ball so anybody that does damage to the ball the more damage it takes the more damage it deals and 
I mean, we were in, and plus Hera chains everybody to the floor. Right. So you get everything, everybody around the ball. Hero chains them to the floor. And then Mesa just lays them all out. <laughs> and we sat there for four hours in one level. Oh, I believe it. Just doing that. It was so stupid. I miss like to be like to be honest, I miss void farming. I miss all of it. Like it's been so long since I've played Warframe. I don't even think I really remember. Nah, I, no, I won't say that. I won't say I remember the controls. They'll come back to me. <laughs> um like I was actually I like it's been so long that I played Warframe and stuff that I told Sarah that like because of the new stuff coming in I, I, I'm trying to get her to join me. So I figured, why don't I just say, screw it, start a new account on PC, and play through all the story stuff with Sarah. Or you can start a new account on Xbox, and we can all play. I don't have my Xbox. <laughs> I don't have, like, I don't have Sarah's Xbox. <laughs> Hunter, I'm right there with you. That's that's another reason why I stopped playing too. Cause like I originally was a part of a clan, part of a dojo and all that. But after a while of other games coming out during that time of me when I was big into Warframe, other games kind of took my focus away from Warframe. And after a while, like when I came eventually came back, my whole clan was disbanded. Everyone gave up, you know, stopped playing the game. So I was like, well, <laughs> I'm kind of by myself again. <laughs> like I'm right there with you, man. I know exactly how that is. That's the thing, though. Like, I usually play alone as well. But in comparison to other communities, Warframe has a really, really good community. Yeah, they really, it really is. Like, but there's I've a lot of people had... that are very inviting in the community. Right. I've never had, well, I won't say I've never had an issue in the community. Like, there are some times where you get in there and people are like, well, you have to have this, you have to have that. You know, yeah. It's like, no. But for the most part, you know, it's you get in there and they ask you if you've done it before. And, you know, if you haven't, they explain it. And if you still don't get it, then, you know, they'll do a couple of runs. So they're usually pretty good about that. Yeah, I've definitely ran into a few people that are like that for sure. Um, yeah, and I get that, Hunter. I mean, there's definitely clans that are like that, where there, there, yeah. there are those clans where, like, you have to be playing this game every single day. You know, like, there are people like that. That's in any clan, though, to be honest. Like, you'll have clans that are in COD that are like that. <laughs> well, in Destiny, I mean... Right, I even in Destiny. In our clan was, like, everybody pretty much left. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you know, I don't blame you, because nobody plays anymore. Right. after my xbox was stolen and yeah i pretty much hadn't been on at all i still need to get a, <laughs> I got uh, kicked out of wow for having a job dude that's fucking cold <laughs> that is so cold <laughs> Oh man, that sucks, that, man. <laughs> that's messed up. But that's that's the thing, communities. That's another thing about communities though. Cause like there are people in certain communities, wow is a great example of where there are some pretty toxic people. <laughs> and it's like you know, sometimes you just gotta find the right people and connect you know, and connect very you know, connect with them and it's like like the clan I'm in with Sarah, my my girlfriend Sarah, 
uh, for Destiny, I don't know any of her friends that well. But, you know, most of them are her brother's friends that Sarah got to know through him, and they've all became very, very close. I'm still new to knowing everybody there. And, but they're, they're completely complacent with me. You know, like, when I get frustrated or anything like that, they let me rant, but they're completely cool with me. Like they have no problems with me. And even when I take a whole season off of destiny and I come back, they're completely fine with it. And we'll run raids or we'll run dun the new, you know, the dungeons or whatever seasonal content. We'll run stuff together. Um, Sarah has been running iron banner with them lately, which she's surprisingly Sarah has been having a lot of fun in iron banner. <laughs> she's been getting a lot better in crucible, which is I'm, so surprised because she used to be this person Sarah's a very timid person so she used to she used to never be like if I play a multiplayer shooter I'll get super competitive and I can't play it mm -hmm. now she's like screw competitiveness I'm just gonna have fun and dick around and like that's that's how you have fun in a video game and I'm so glad that she's having fun with Destiny and having fun with her friends so <laughs> I'm so glad that I got her addicted to Destiny <laughs> No, that's cool for sure because i mean playing crucible was like all i used to do i mean i hated doing the raids just because you know i didn't like getting in there doing the same thing for four to six hours oh yeah i don't i don't blame you on that one man Like, most recently, <laughs> you're just playing Farming Simulator. <laughs> so many people are playing simulator games, man. Like, I don't know what it is, but lately, I, I think it's just because of the, the developers that have been making them have doing such a good job that, you know, they're able to make these really good games. Like... I got I never played it, but I got sucked into watching some some YouTubers I follow play uh, Power Wash Simulator. Like that game, like the music that it has in that game, is so calming, so just laid back. While you're just power washing a house or power washing a car or some kind of vehicle, it's just <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> but it's like. How? How is a game that is based on something you can do in real life? This. <laughs> you do realize that you can put on a headset and actually go outside and power wash something. And... <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Probably be a little, probably be a little more productive. Right? <laughs> I just find it crazy how simulation games have like blown up a little bit more lately. Oh, my camera just got all defocused. Give me a second. But see, that that's the thing, too. It's like... Okay, I have to refine the headset. Why <laughs> go through and play, you know, a power washing game when you can get your butt out of the chair, go outside, power wash the house, you know... Right. <laughs> or the car, or, you know, anything else. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know why it's so appealing for so many people. Like, don't get me wrong. I probably will... I'm not really a big simulator player, unless it's, like, a shooter game more than anything. But, um... But, like, it, it's kind of crazy how simulation games grab a certain niche of people. Like, my, my uncle's... My uncle... And, or my great uncle, actually, and my, um, my great, my great grandfather before he passed, um, my great uncle got my great grandfather into playing flight simulator games. My great grandfather was a World War II, uh, pilot. He, um, well, he wasn't really a pilot, but he knew how to fly planes. He was a ball turret gunner during World War II, but he, he at least had some pilot training though. Um, yeah. and, um, he would get him into playing some of the simulation games on his computer and he actually, he built him a computer so that way it could actually handle the, the system. Um, 
love but like he'll be things. sitting there talking with my uncle's friends that are also playing the simulator but he'll tell them stories of when he was in the war or you know him being in the in the in the bombers and stuff like that like it, it's you know it was really That's cool to, really to hear cool. yeah, yeah it was and the, the thing is is like those those flight simulators that he was playing at the time were so accurate that you could literally he could actually like get on the stick and everything and fly it like he did back in the day it was kind of crazy like it yeah, was really it was really a cool lot of memories coming back for him oh yeah for sure like whenever my uncle would talk about it he always said like it would bring my dad would always talk about these these stories and these stories and stuff like that is like you know my great grand my great grandfather has had had so much experience you know not just in the war but just he was god man if i can remember how old he was he was 92 i think he was he was in the low 90s i i know that but when he passed but like he had he he used to tell tell us tell us all stories about everything like almost every day not really almost every day but like every once in a while he'd he'd be watching like world war ii videos on like history channel or whatever you know like and he would tell us stories about like what he experienced and stuff like that so it was always really cool to for all that stuff and with my uncle getting him into doing the flight simulation stuff he really enjoyed it you know until he he couldn't do it anymore because he started getting right. sick but you know simulate like there are simulation games out there that are like really appealing to people and i don't i don't blame people for getting into them like flight simulation games are, i think are, are like the coolest simulation that you can do because like uh what, what's the one that's current the most current one that microsoft started doing um oh god i have no idea god i don't the remember the name of it last time i played a flight sim was like the F-18 Tomcat. What was it? Um, God. I think it was a Tomcat. I don't know, but... It was the one right after they came out with the F-16. Oh, yeah, it is Flight Simulator. Yeah, Flight Simulator. The one that, that Microsoft made. Um... Like, they actually, for that game specifically, they incorporated, like, Google Maps into it. So that way, when you're flying overhead, you can actually look down and see where you were in relation to the world. And it actually used Google Maps and 3D, and 3D objects of, like, buildings and stuff to actually simulate that part of the world. It was really cool. <laughs> that is cool. Like my my little brother got into playing Flight Simulator uh, a while back, but I don't think his computer can't handle it anymore. <laughs> but like, he really enjoyed it for the t for what he did play, because it was really cool to go from one end one part of the world to the other, and it flying so many different vehicles and stuff. It was really cool. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, like I said, I hadn't played a flight simulator in, I think the last time I played one was on, like, a 386. 386 or 486. So it's been a while. Right. But yeah, that used to be, like, incredibly fun spend hours doing that now, this thing's really starting to come out I'm really liking the silhouette I'm liking the shape I'm definitely liking this shape for sure so how are you gonna like pose that I'm probably gonna use um, Transpose Master, I think. I'm gonna try to mess with Transpose Master. 
Well, I mean, um, are you going to like have it wrapping around? Are you going to have it I mean, like <clears throat> the pose itself not like transpose mask. Oh, oh. Uh I've kind of had this idea of it. I'm still going to have the tree trunk there in the behind it uh, where it's coming out of it. And I'm kind of having an idea of it. I still want to have it where it's it's breaking the branch like branches and stuff coming out of it where it's lurching out. Right. Um, I kind of want it to be in a, a roaring kind of pose. The mandibles nice and wide and like like screep screeching at you. Um, so basically you're thinking like kind of like that uh, S pose or are you thinking more of a C shape? I think it's going to be more of a C shape because it's going to be more more downward. No, yeah, it's going to be more of a C shape because it's coming out of the out of the trunk itself. So it'll be coming out. I guess it's going to be kind of more like kind of like this, I guess. Mm -hmm. In a sense yeah. here there we go kind of like that and then the pincers the actual claws and stuff will be like to the sides coming out of it kind of like kind of how we had the pose originally yeah um like one of the like one of them the pincers could actually be like wrapped around a tree or something kind of like pulling it downward still keeping that that initial pose there right so I, I, I really do like that pose. It's it's very, it has a lot of action. It has a lot of motion. It still shows the intimidation of the character. So that's kind of what I want to do. Um, currently, like, obviously. Are you, are you talking about yours or mine? Or what are you talking about? Um, mine that, I, that that pose. Oh, my bad. Um, I mean, I can't see it. So. Yeah, sorry, that's my bad. The this kind of pose, these these two kind of. Collapse chat here. Yeah. Like I can see the pincer coming off. Well, you can't really see my cursor. God, I can't forget about that. Heck yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So kind of having like one of the pincers kind of wrapping around a, a branch. And then instead of having the one arm coming down, it'll be more like the pincer arm like like this more. Yeah, I mean, I would do a quick like. Uh, just a quick silhouette. Drawing. And just see how it looks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could even block that out and use the silhouette feature in ZBrush. And, you know, once you get to the posing part. Or, I mean, you can do it now even, but, you know. I mean, that was one thing. Man, I quit yawning. <laughs> that was one thing that uh, Justin, I think, that he was doing when he was doing the uh, ZBrush sculpt. The the sculpt off thing or the ideas. yeah. Yeah, I've never really used the the silhouette feature or anything like that. Well, in in that particular way specifically. Um, it's good to be able to see, and you know, kind of an interesting thing with Maya is. Uh, sorry, I was kind of sidetracked for a second, but a uh, interesting thing with Maya is once you go through and 
take in a character if you don't add any lights to the scene which is by default if you hit seven it gives you an automatic silhouette oh yeah 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 that i'm familiar with that uh, helps that us so much oh yeah for sure and especially animating and trying to get the pose and the silhouette and everything to look good yeah that's one of the things my uh uh, my instructors at Full Sail would tell us when we were doing animations is, at the time mm -hmm. is to switch out to using lights and no lights every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely impressive. I mean... I, like I said, I use it a lot. I'm almost to the point where I'm going to... Uh... To be honest, this is like my first like real insect-like creature, actually. So this is actually... This is coming out pretty good. I'm kind of really second. liking it. 939 is kind of insect-ish. He's more canine more than anything. Like, I consider insect as in, you know, you know, keratin and carapace and abdomen and all that kind of stuff, you know? You know, exoskeleton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give it to you, but I mean, <laughs> that's that's how I see it. That's how I see okay. it. You go, girl. <laughs> you got this. should add a camera in here and track it so I don't have to keep like moving the viewport around yeah it wouldn't be a bad idea Thinking about maybe having the main arm, a secondary arm, and still trying to determine. I might do grub legs, to be honest. I'm kind of kind of going into the route of wanting to do more like itty bitty grub legs. Maybe. Definitely getting some raid vibes, that's for sure. Yeah. From uh, Evolve. I'm really getting some Wraith vibes with this character. Which isn't a bad thing. I really love Wraith. Really good character. History is going to start suggesting, or what uh, 
Google's going to start suggesting now that I'm looking for funeral home entrances. <laughs> yeah, I can I can already imagine. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Probably a dead end though. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Google when it auto tracks our crap, man. <laughs> it's like creating it, oh, its own assumptions. Uh, always entertaining sometimes. Oh, I don't want to do that shit. I need to separate these eyes. So these set of eyes are the old ones, so I might not even have to get rid of these. No, actually, I'll keep them. I might, I might use them at some point, to be honest. You can never have too many eyes when it's an insect creature. See. about messing up the eyes. Now that I have everything in its proper spot. Like, and I'm not joking on that. I'm, I'm actually telling the truth. When it comes to bug creatures, nothing is more terrifying with a bug creature than a crap ton of eyes. No joke. It's one of the reasons why, like, so many... Uh, good ex a good example. If you look at Gorgon from Evolve, right? You look at Gorgon from Evolve. She doesn't have... She has asymmetric eyes. Her eyes are not, like... You have two big eyes and a bunch of eyes around it, like how mine are. Hers are asymmetric. So you have like one big eye, then another smaller eye over here. You have a bunch of little ones around it. And then it like, it just adds to that creep factor. Will we do that? Probably. Who knows? We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> Like, I definitely like the, the head shape that I have because it's very, like, it's kind of hitting the nail. It's definitely hitting the head that I want because it's not, well, the shape of the character in general. It, it's resembling more reptilian. It's also an insectoid. It's, you know, it, it's definitely hitting the head on what I'm going for. Um, what I'm trying to figure out with the neck is more making it so that this thing could st stick it like shrink its head into its into its chest cavity almost um i'm trying to think of like how can it how would it be able to to you know do that like it's its body can come up and and hide itself you know your reference well the thing is with my reference like so like the mantis here this one this one it's more so here's this part here is its abdomen is its torso area right here and then its arms come off and basically basically it's doing this so it's hiding its head within its arms um within the pincer region so yeah but i mean you could do something like that which yeah you know, you're not just, wrong yeah think out of the box though yeah like mantis mantids don't really have a neck per se they have their neck is like relatively short um which i, I could sh cut this down and shrink it in a little bit um but like i kind of like the idea of it being able to have that a little bit of reach with its head 
Not a whole lot. I don't want it to be like have it where it has like a snake like neck where it can shoot out and grab at something. No, I'd rather have it have just a little bit of reach. You know, give it a little bit of movement. So like I could cut it down. I could cut it down. Um parts of the skull can be pulled out just a little bit so it matches kind of that silhouette and maybe with the pincers because the pincers are going to be more well not like not this way but this way are gonna like one of the things that i'm gonna when i design the the arms is i want to design them in the closed up form first and then separate them and move them into position so that way everything matches So that way you well, have that, I mean, that you're, camouflage. You're, you're, you're not animating this. Uh... Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, for it's more of a a detail aesthetic more than anything. Of like, if you were if you were to put these together, you could you could tell that they could they would connect. Yeah, I mean that's fine. But like I said, it's this isn't going to be animated. It's just going to be something that is on your desk true you know so when you create it i mean you don't have to worry about it being opened or closed start adding in the legs and stuff we can start just adding in some basic legs here so I'm gonna add did I ever add that in here I don't remember did I brushes did I add those in here can't express enough how much I'm like super excited about doing this Alembic stuff in Bondi. Glad that you're uh, having a lot of fun there, man. 
I am. I mean, this is this is a blast. <laughs> that was weird. I think it's because I let go of control on accident. So it just went click, 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 click. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, that's a first. I've never seen that happen. But... <laughs>
brings everything to the table. You know, who brings heart, who brings their vision, and particularly who bring their brain to the table. So that uh, they're aware of what they're doing and they're making conscious choices. for people who feel like they're downloading from the cosmos. You know, just let... That's how it came out. You know, okay, great. Now let's make it better. But, uh, you know, just writing from a place of understanding rather than from a place of fear. Or you're just grateful for any idea that comes along. And you don't want to change it because you don't know how.
So what I'm thinking about doing is on the hair is actually making it kind of translucent. I think that'd look pretty good. You said you were doing, you said you were doing what? I said <clears throat> that uh, I'm thinking on the hair of going ahead and making it translucent. Why translucent? Because it actually gives it some Translucency. I mean, <laughs> like as far as the light passing through it is the idea that I'm going for. Oh, okay. That that makes more sense then. It also softens the hair up a little bit.
There you go. That's why. See how much of a difference that makes? I would understand that if you were doing strips of hair instead of the whole, you know, the whole head, you know, like it is for the stylized mm -hmm. character, you know. The only the only problem is that it comes off as it's like it's very very thinning, you know. Well, I mean, look at that receding hairline. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like, you, know you don't, but you don't get that effect of having the streaks of hair going through it. That's that's the only issue. Like, if you add in a, um, like, a, like a oh. some kind of a map that adds mm -hmm. that extra streaks through it, then I to Maybe kind of break it up. Turn that up. That might improve it. Because well, like turned it up. Because I do have. Uh, that in there. I mean, plus I could tone down the transparency just a little more. Dim light.
That's looking really good. Yeah, it's starting to come out, that's for sure. I might actually get rid of these pincers and use these ones, to be honest. And just change them up a little bit. I might just reuse them. Yeah. That's definitely looking pretty damn good in my opinion. Yeah, I like it.
going for that for sure. Yeah, that's looking good. If anything, I could probably use these for the for the legs, if anything. I can use them down here actually. But are you going more for a treant or are you going more for a bug? I'm definitely going for more of an insect more than anything this time at this point now um i definitely want to add i want to make it so that the carapace itself looks more like a tree like it has more of a bark like structure to the carapace itself so it'll be a little rougher it'll be a little bit more angular and stuff like that i want to i want to really uh, push that push that bit of detail with that when I get to it. Okay. I could shrink the abdomen up. Maybe. No, actually, I got an interesting idea. I got an interesting idea, actually. So, what if this thing's able to curl itself up into, a, into, you know, the environment, into a tree or something, get itself all, you know, cozied up and everything, but because its legs are a certain way, it can't necessarily bend them or get them inside of the tree. Instead, it uses them as, uh, like, almost like sticks. Like, the tree, like, the legs almost resemble sticks as a way of sensing motion. What if we do something okay. like that? <clears throat> and So, how, how big are you wanting your uh, boulder? <laughs> I know, I'm trying, I'm really thinking Not about how I want to do this. Not trying to be very bad news really trying to think about how I want to do this. That's why I said, you know, if you go through and you uh, plan it out, you know, low poly, and then you do your blocking and all that, block asymmetrical because you don't need symmetry if this is just going to be something that you're going to print and have on your desk right right 
Um, that's going to be huge right there. I'm going to, I'm actually going to shrink it up. Are you going to make that the holder? I'm making this the, the branch, the tree that it comes out of. Is what this is going to be. And then... Yeah, but think about how big that holder is already. Yeah, good point. And you want to make this appear massive. You know, right now that's about the size of the squirrel. So if you want it to be something massive, then yeah, you know, I would definitely like shrink that way down. You know, probably to the size of the pen holder in there already. You know, like I said, just knock the uh knock the pen holder that's currently there duplicate that and use that as a stump build your character around that. No, because I didn't keep it because I had that hiccup, so I didn't keep it. Right, 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 right. Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to go back into this. And then we're gonna have you. And then we're gonna have 
this. So there's that. Now we got that fixed. So now we can grab a tree. Let's go and run this. Dynamish this. Uh, yeah, let's dynamish it. Actually, turn that off.
All right, we're back. Welcome back, man. I was gonna like come in. And... What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Scare the crap get out of everybody. Now get you back for scaring the crap out of me early. <laughs> And I'll tell you, the Papa John's uh, like Philly cheese steak pizza. That's actually pretty good. Sadly, I wouldn't know because we don't have a Papa John's around here anymore. Really sucks. I really love Papa John's. I like Papa John's just because it's not like eating grease. Yeah, I agree. All right, it's funny because uh, Barbara like doesn't like Papa John's whatsoever. <laughs> My ex and her family didn't like Papa John's. I'm like, man... I don't know. More for me. What you think, sir? Do what? What you think, sir? I still didn't catch what you said. Sorry. What you think, sir? How's this looking? Oh, uh, a second. Nice. Yeah, I think that's about the right size. Right. And then I can pretty much, I can be able to scale this back quite a bit. Yeah. Try to match the size of this a little bit more. Well, you mean scale your critter down? Yeah. We'll yeah. Scale it down just a little bit, but I want to I want to make sure I get the character done before I can even be like, all right, let's shrink it. <laughs> I want to make sure it's done. <laughs> I don't want to have because I don't want to have issues later <laughs> on. <laughs> well, I mean, as far as the overall like size and everything. I think that's a good size right there. Okay. It's pretty big, but I don't know. I mean, what do you like? What size are you wanting? I guess is the question. That's a pretty good question, actually, because when it comes to stat, like the size of it. Cause this is <clears throat> currently the way he is standing he's about like mm -hmm. that much taller than the where the pen is maybe a little bit more you know you probably can't see the pen <laughs> but well, he's, he's, so he's about mean... like he's about like that much taller than my actual pen yeah. so um So you're looking at right about a foot. Yeah, he's he's so far it's looking about probably about like a 12 inch statue probably. But I think I can probably knock it down a little bit if anything. So resin so wise, you're printing it like a max of six inches. So you probably go like five and a half. So yeah, I can cut that down quite a bit. Well, I mean, if you're which is it's not going to hurt parts, the design. No, if you're separating out the parts, then 
you know, you can separate each one out. Yeah. And just print individually. I mean, the legs, you can pretty much print those in one pass. You know, you just have to make connectors for them. Or at least have them fit within the container. Yeah, that would be the big thing. I used the trim cut tool for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> It didn't, come out, it didn't come out too bad. No. Just clean up the edges, that's all. Yeah, it's still dying a mesh right now. It's pretty low res right now. Yeah. I at least wanted to get the rough shape in. Mm -hmm. So, at least that works out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for overall, you yeah, know, I shrink the head I down would, a bit. The head's kind of huge. Like, compared to the character's body, the head's kind of gigantic. Well, I mean, that's a, you know, however you want to do it. So far, it's definitely coming out. I'm definitely liking the character a lot. I'm liking the shapes that I've created so far. Yeah, you're doing a good job. Yeah. And I'm still, and I'm pretty much utilizing. Uh, oh, sorry, I have to stretch. Oh, I've been sitting here for too long. No, I get it. Oh, I probably should get up and stand and stretch though. I just got up and had something to eat a little bit. That was a pretty good amount of work for a couple for a few hours, to be honest. Sorry. Well, keep, <clears throat> just keep at it. Yeah. I definitely the the face will probably change quite a bit once I start adding in the actual mandibles in there. But uh, so far, that's pretty much the shape I want out of it. So that's a good thing. Um, the big thing is going to be how the mandibles are going to fit together and how they do all that so then once I spread them out it'll you know I won't have to do so much to try to figure it out <laughs> well right now you have kind of a M shape going on yeah I do yeah and that's not that's not really reading well yeah it's not I mean what I would do, I'm not talking about the mouth or anything. I'm talking about the silhouette. Yeah. What I would do is I would go ahead and pull the head forward. Get rid of that S or the swan neck. And... <clears throat> I would go more with just a straight, like. Yeah, I, I think that might. Coming, yeah. Coming out of the shoulder area, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, I, the neck is definitely kind of bugging me as well. Um, I definitely agree with that. Cause I could, I was thinking about giving it like a, uh, not really a crest per se, but more of like a, a decoration kind of deal on the head a little bit. Nothing too crazy, but just more of like something to kind of give it a little bit more of a form. A little bit. So if I get rid of the the lumpiness of the neck and give it more of a uh, uh, 
Well, I mean, you could always go like. <clears throat> Because, like, that's the thing, like, insects don't necessarily have necks, per se, you know? There's basically a, a joint, and then they can move the head. That's really about it. You know, with the way their, uh, their exoskeleton is, they basically have, like, a joint for where the neck connects, and then they just be able to move their head, rotate, whatever. Even for grubs, like, grubs just have their head and then the body connected to it. So, I could, simplify that a little bit, you know, simplify it down a bit, and make it, pretty much make it more you know, give it more sense than what it currently has. Oh, I didn't even realize. See, that's the thing. I need to have, like, an alert for when uh, chat points are used or something, because I didn't even notice that. Thank you for letting me know, Sarah, because I didn't even see that. She did that four minutes ago, and I didn't even see it. Uh, I, ma I made a mistake. Hang on. I didn't realize that it's sharing my screen in one area versus the other. Okay, there we go. All right, can you see that? Uh, whoops. Yep, I see it. Here, I'll move this. So, <clears throat> basically, you have shape coming. Uh, I would do is we have so what I would do is probably have just it come out of here. then what you could do is, you know, if you're going for kind of a wispy kind of thing, then you could always some horns like that. <laughs> you 
you see where I'm going with it? Yeah, I do. I definitely do see where you're going with it, yeah. So, tip that in... Yeah, tip that in X. Actually, you could probably bring that down a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. And then forward just a titch and Actually, go ahead and bring it down. Because the back of the head, like on most critters, is going to be pretty much flush with the back of the neck. Because right. that's where you're going to have the spine connect. Mm -hmm. So, if you bring that down a little bit more, to where you get a nice curve going into the back and then angle off the front you know build out your chest piece and all that you see what I'm saying yeah yeah knock that way back I mean, you could pull straight out of that, though. Like that area you just knocked back. Yeah, you could pull straight out of that. See how much of a difference that makes? Yeah, that actually does look a lot better. That was actually kind of what I was thinking of doing initially. With, like, the actual shape and stuff like that. Like, the only reason I'm giving, like, this... Having, like, this little bit of a bulge here... Is... To emphasize, like, the back of the head. Of, like, where the, the spine would connect to the back of the head, essentially. So it can... Yeah, but you don't have to do that. Because you want the silhouette. And if you hold your head or hold your hand like at the base of your head, <clears throat> your neck actually goes under the skull. Oh, yeah, good point. And then I would say as far as underneath the neck, you know, think of how a dog's neck connects. You know, it's more back, you know, about halfway or thereabouts. Usually. And that's going to change your silhouette too. I mean, you have a really good idea going on. I wouldn't go 
I would go ahead and pull that back a little bit more and thin that out. That neck piece. Because <clears throat> here, basically you have your head here and comes out and you have it come like that. So what I would do is where the neck or where the head comes this way. is have it you know like maybe right in here connect and then connect like that because then you get the head you know the neck basically going into or the spine actually going into where the head is and making that connection here. Yeah, there you go. Look at a turtle head. That's actually, yeah, that's kind of where I'm thinking at this point, yeah. Turtle head, yeah. Look at how it connects. And then you can, like, modify it a little bit. I mean, don't be afraid to bash more or less the different creatures Actually, that's definitely looking a lot better now. Bring it back. <clears throat> See what you got. Think of your silhouette, though. Go to a side view and bring it up a little. thinking about doing something would, with this with this abdomen it's kind of bugging me well the abdomen isn't really that bad so on the head area like I would thin out the neck a little bit more just scale it down and stretch it um, and then kind of pull it in Because like I said, if if you look over here for a second, you have yeah. You know, basically, I'm just gonna do that real short. So where you have this shape here. And these, you can make more of a, like tree bark. And they are 
whatever. Uh, but slightly angle this. And then come in from like here. You see where I'm going with that? Are you talking about this uh, this area in particular right here that I just masked? Yeah. No. No. Sorry, there was a delay. <laughs> no, you're good. Or are you referring to this area down here? I'm talking about the neck. Oh, the neck. Okay. Oh, oh. Because, see, right now you have it to where the neck comes like this. Yeah, kind of. And then you go this way. Instead of doing that, just go ahead and pull it like straight. There you go. Yeah. So much better. And I would thin out like where the tongue area is. Thin that out just a little bit and have it go like more into the uh, like bottom of the jaw. Yeah, pull that right there back, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. I like that. What do you think? It's definitely looking a lot better, that's for sure. Plus, with the amount that it has, it could actually potentially curl its head down if it needed to for, like, protection. Which is kind of one of the reasons why I'm thinking about putting, like, some kind of, like, a... Not a headdress, but some kind of... <clears throat> well, Display, the... because with it being kind of yeah, insectoid, it would have some look kind at of a the... display. Look at the idea over here. Oh, yeah, okay. I see what you're... Yeah. Yeah, because with this head, and I'm just going to throw another idea up here but <clears throat> with this head you know if you go ahead and you know it's not going to be symmetrical so you know um, so you get this, and then it comes across like that. So if you take this head and You 
do something like that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That actually makes, that actually would be a good idea. So you see why I'm going that direction is because you have all these short shapes and they're very like kind of compact and everything mm -hmm. but you're trying to make it blend in with trees and things of that nature you know so incorporate that like i had one of my initial ideas i had which i didn't think it would actually be a good idea would be like parts of the the arms could have um not spikes but almost like um growths that almost resembled uh sticks coming off of kind of like how the horn those are with how you have for like the horns and stuff mm -hmm. um i might still do that more it's more going to be on the forearms area than anything um yeah but if you think of like the mantis that puts its arms up they have little barbed teeth that come off like right off in this area yeah so it kind of so could, i'm could work i mean you could do that and then it would be more tree like and then if you put you know even just uh you know you come in and put something because like even like this little guy here kind of has like these little little bumps and like he looks more like a leaf than anything but he also looks more like bark as well so yeah but like, kind of like look at the look at the change that i just made yeah okay so you see how that one change went from yeah, you know, making something that's how's it going Colin? <laughs> i just saw your your uh message dude <laughs> staring intensifies yeah staring intensifies <laughs> so you see how going this way actually breaks that head up yeah it breaks it up quite a bit actually but it still gives you that, you know, if it was to pull its head in and, I mean, look here. See this gap that you have here? Mm-hmm. That's, a head would fit there. Right. Which is kind of what I was going for for this. So that's, the, the shape of the head definitely fits there a lot easier now than it did originally so right. that definitely works out a lot better so if, if you pull this down not now but if you <sighs> were to pull this down and it was to hide then you would have this look and it would also make itself look more menacing right <clears throat> hey common how's it going man So that's why I was saying, you know, and plus you said that you wanted to give it kind of a, a, uh, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of, uh, kind of like a mythic figure. Yeah, originally it was going to be almost like a, a, a worm, a drake kind of a creature, yeah. But, you know, if you go with a headset like that, then you can still pull that, you know, uh, magical, you know, you know it's... More of a fantasy a, type creature a, that you could find in a mystical forest well, or not, something. Well, not just that, but also, like, it's more of a queen or, you know, 
a high uh, standing yeah, yeah. figure. Yeah, I see what you're talking. Where you're going for? Yeah, yeah, it definitely would work there too. Because you have the praying mantis axe aspect. And then, you know, if you go with something with the branches and all that, it would kind of add to that. And then you could even go as far as to add, you know, like your mid and small level details. Because right now you have like the uh, the puffy sections on the where the uh, shoulders are, mm -hmm. which work really well. You can texture those like knots. You know how when a tree branches out, the right at the base of some of the branches, it's mostly in like maple trees. But you see kind of a growth around that. Oh, yeah, yeah. You could texture it like that. Yeah, that would act, yeah. That actually and that would work pretty dope. Like, go, pointing back at this little guy here, that it actually kind of, what you're describing kind of looks like this section right here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, because that actually would work out pretty good. So if you did something like that, then, I mean, that would work out great. And then take, uh, you know, kind of like maple or oak textures. And you could even do a texture of yellow birch. That's how you know somebody's from the Northeast. Because they talk about birch trees. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a stereotype. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> it's true, though. Like, <clears throat> I haven't seen a birch tree in I don't know how long. But anytime there's a movie or something and there's birch trees, I'm like, yep, they shot that somewhere in the northeast or the mid-north. But yeah, if you go with like a yellow birch, mix in some oak or some maple while you're doing your texturing, this is going to look so sick. And then add in, I would say probably... Like, I was definitely thinking of, like, the oak striations from the bark being mm -hmm. kind of like that texture you see on kind of on certain areas of the carapace itself. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking of, because I, I'm, these are probably not the right, um, uh, bark textures, Jesus, um, but, you know, kind of having these kind of striations of how bark is yeah. is kind of what right. I was going to go for for the carapace uh, look. And then I added some uh, oak. I added a, an oak piece here so that, or not a a yellow birch, a yellow a, a yellow, yellow birch, birch onto here so at least I could have have an idea of how this looks. Yeah, cuz I would say for the go back to that Second in, second down. The white-ish one. This one or this one? So from the left, top left, 
go over one and down one or from where you're at go up one yeah that one I would say pretty much every aspect of that would create one amazing character yeah because I can see kind of the, the shapes here yep yeah, for sure. I mean, every aspect of that image right there basically gives you all the textures that you would need. I mean, break it up. Right, obviously. You know, but I would hell add some snow to it. You know, if you're gonna use this as a as a um, portfolio piece, which I mean, it's already looking really sick. So I would add this as a portfolio piece, and then turn it into a uh, excuse me, turn it into a stylus holder. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, Comment, I'm def you do, you this do character is definitely can, coming out for sure. I'm definitely enjoying it. You do know that you can jump into the uh, join the stream. Yeah, we don't bite. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do. That's why it's there. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, there's a unfollow. Right, there we go. That's weird. <laughs> All right. So since Sarah bites, then I guess yeah, it was an idea for you to join. But yeah, I would definitely, you know, obviously not now because you're not at the texturing state. But keep it but in mind. You, keep it in mind. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, once you get to that point, I would go through and, you know, utilize those different features of that image. Because, you know, you could use the snow. And, you know, have that on the character. That would look really cool. You know, especially the white in contrast to, like, uh, you know, the green, the browns. And the gold. You know, all the, like, the green, brown, and gold. That all goes together really well right there we go that's definitely looking a little better there's there's the color yeah i, I was curious so i went through um Carvana to see what they would give me for my car. And yeah, I made that mistake. No, they're not leaving me alone. Let me guess now they won't leave you alone? No, not at all. <laughs>
But yeah, I'm kind of excited about that because I think once you take the character and really start pushing it, that you're going to get a crazy nice character out of this. Yeah, for sure. Like, like this was a really interesting idea. Like, originally, I think I had a very generic idea of what I wanted to do. But then, I don't know, these last couple of days I was thinking about it uh, when I was hanging out with Sarah. Like, it just popped in my head and I was just like, I had this idea of this creature just rearing out and just like, screaming like just rearing back and just screaming at something you know like in an attacking way and when i imagined think, it i imagined the pincers i imagined the the mandibles and all of that i was like i should do that for this character but think about this character though because if you open that bottom jaw And you pivot that on the back. That's going to look insane. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, this thing is... Like, I I can't wait, to be honest, to start messing with how the mandibles are going to work and how I'm going to pose, like, position them. Because... Once I get those positioned, I think I'm going to keep them where they are. Uh, well, once I get them sculpted and designed and stuff. But um, the, there's, the mandibles will probably stay where they are when I get to posing it and stuff. But like, that's going to be the fun part is figuring out how everything looks currently to open. And then figuring out the inner part of the mouth and stuff like that's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Just duplicate, duplicate the head and try it. I mean, all you have to do is use the slice tool and I think most slice the head one way or the other. and then just move the jaw and see what it looks like. Make sure you're not in perspective. I'm not. Oh, I have local symmetry on. That's what it was. It is actually reality. It doesn't count. Let's turn. Okay, this is just the head. Yeah. And you said use the slice tool? Yeah. Have you not used the slice tool? No, I've never, dude. I'm not joking. Are you serious? Yeah, I've never used the slice oh tool. Oh my god. <laughs> dude. That's like ZBrush 101. Go to side view. You know, and when I was young, and then I use it like a mask. Things. No. No one knows that those songs existed. So it kind of here, count when, you when you use the slice tool, and then put it out into the world. None you have out into the world, but there comes you have your item. Mm -hmm. If you, if you on, I think start back here, you're just holding on to all of these old and then you start dragging, and I think if you want to grow, then you can. This will become its own polygroup, and this will become its own polygroup. So turn on uh, frame, polyframe. There you go. So then go ahead and pull across it. And then just as you would for a mask, you go ahead and you can let up on alt. And that'll, if you hit alt again, then it gives you basically a curve that you can modify. The cliche of art is not finished, it's abandoned. Yes, it can always be better. 
but up on you have to finish and you have yeah. to put it out because otherwise you're just the guy talking about the art you're not the guy doing it you get better you by go. doing it finishing it learning from that process and moving oh, on to crap. you're holding either shift or alt You're gonna make me open up ZBrush, aren't you? You might need to, cause dude, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never, dude, my teachers never even explain how to use any of this freaking crap, man. All right. It's it's no, quite you... infuriating. <laughs> no, it's. Dude, you need to do research. Yeah, I need to do way more research. I mean, watch people working with it. Ask questions. All right, so here we go. So I'm just gonna do a Dynamesh ball. I'm gonna turn off. Oops. Didn't want to do that. Shift F. Okay. You following along here? A little slice curve. Paying attention? I think I actually just did one. There we go. Hey. So look. Okay. All right. So if you come in, actually that's the wrong direction. So no, that was the right direction. So basically. You come in, if you let up on, I hate that. If you, if you let up on shift, then you have, what is going on? So if you let up on shift, it doesn't lock it, you see? If you hold shift, then it locks it in increments. And so if you let up on shift and you come in and you want to make a curve, you let up on alt, you hit alt again, and it should actually not do that, but That's weird that it's doing that. I don't know why it is. But anyway, that's probably my ZBrush for whatever reason. But then as you make your cuts, you can see how it divides it up into different poly groups. So when you hold Control Shift Click, and shift, it makes it at a sharp angle, and then when you release it, it allows you to do free, and then you hold alt yeah. down to turn into a curve, release to lock it in, and then move it. Right? Yep. Okay, that makes way more sense. Okay, that makes more and more sense. And that's why I was saying, like, just go through and use this. Oh, for me, it's actually all or option. No, yeah, option. So see, like, you get a nice curve like that. And it's a super quick way of, like, clearing out for the jaw or splitting parts off and all that good stuff. 
You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. need to do it like that just go ahead and do the entire bottom jaw oh I see so, what you're talking about I see what you're talking about okay yeah because I mean this is basically just a duplicate of what you're working on and if you just want to see what it's going to look like when you split it off, I mean, there you go. There's your different poly groups. You know, split them and then, you know, close holes. Probably hidden in close holes. That's going to make your life so much easier. I'd turn on double, too. I thought it was on. I must have turned it off on accident somehow. Yeah, and then just control W. Uh, Make it all one not, poly group. It's not letting me do it. Yeah, it won't let me poly group. Uh, uh, oh, that's why. Hidden. That's why. There you go. I forgot I need to be... Uh, No, I shouldn't have done fill that. Needed holes. to do that. That's weird. Some fill holes. Uh, that could create a problem right here, though. But we'll see what happens. No, I mean, it's fine. Like I said, you're not going to use this as the final anyway. Oh, you said fill holes. I was going to do close yeah. holes. Well, I mean, close holes, fill holes, whatever. Oh, it actually didn't screw it up. That's good. That's kind of a surprise. I didn't even and get messed up the there same, either. Do the same for the top. It's not bad. And, and then... <clears throat> excuse me. Go ahead and uh, on the bottom one and just... Set your pivot point in the middle and in the back, and then just rotate it.
and that'll give you an idea of what it's going to look like when you're you know, kind of at that point. And you, you know you can align that without having to rotate it and everything. No, it just keeps, it allows me to keep it, let me know that it's in a position. Yeah, but you can align that like super fast. So yeah, just take both of those, jump back to your body. Shut off the other head. Sculpt that neck out. Yeah, that's all you need. Drop that bottom jaw maybe another yeah there you go so that's what it would look like you would modify more on it. Right, obviously. So that's the easy way to split that apart. Wait, banned from joining? What? Huh? What happened? I don't know. I think I missed something. What got banned? Where? from joining what because I don't see anything oh I think she might be talking about when uh, we were talking about joining the join the stream chat in your discord I think, I think I might need to refresh. Because oh the last thing I see in chat is like from a while ago. Because I saw a comment said something and then in chat it's not the same. Oh, I see what Sarah meant. I didn't realize that. That's weird, because I didn't see any of that. I only saw Common saying hi, and then Sarah saying I do, and then I saw, you know, then Common put the, the sweat one, 
I didn't see what she said about her, why she's banned from joining chat. And I didn't see what Common initially said about what this character was. This was this was because of you joking, Sarah. That there's no one's banned or anything. That was because you were joking about something. <laughs> that's how that's why I was confused. Um So to answer your question, Common, because I didn't see your uh comment, I, I have that blocked on accident. That was my bad. Um It is my this character is um, I think it should be a portfolio piece, honestly. It can be a portfolio piece. I got no problem with that. I, I mean, I think that this is... This is definitely something that you should add to your portfolio. Because of the way it looks. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I'm going to merge... Are they still separate polygroups? Yeah, they're separated. They're separate pieces. So when I turn this off, go here, they're all separate polygroups. Okay. Yeah, and then just... Why do I keep turning on? Is that the Boolean thing that I keep clicking on accident? I don't know. I... I have my contacts on. Yeah, because like whenever I go to a different sub tool, I accidentally hit something over here, and it, uh, and it turns yeah. on something. I'm assuming it's the, the live boolean sh stuff. So yeah, there you go. It's so when I when I redid my dashboard for 2022, um, I decided to change how it looked. And I also changed the size of some of my stuff. That I'm, I think, because it's the rescaling of the size is messing with some of the icons, like the Boolean like icons. So whenever I, you know, hover over here and I click on the actual sub tool, I'm turning on the Boolean stuff when I shouldn't be turning it on. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, aside from just a couple main things that I need in my UI, I don't mess with it. Yeah, I decided to switch some things around. I got rid of all the crap that was on the right side that I don't ne necessarily use. I added some of the extra brushes that I, I do end up using a little bit more often. You know, I added some of uh, Matt's stuff in here as well so mm -hmm. his primitives are in here um but i mean for the most part like if you learn the shortcut keys then you, you don't need that stuff well the mats uh mats, pieces yeah. don't yeah mats pieces don't actually have um a shortcut key applied to that so yeah, but it, if you hit B, I, because B is going to bring up your brushes, I is going to bring up your IMM brushes, and then if he, there, it should automatically set a letter associated with it. See, these ones are down here. But these ones aren't his IMM primitives. So they don't have a shortcut key? No. So if you hit BI, there's no letter on that? No. Hang on. Let me hold it there for a second. Because the primitive one is... Is it that one? No, it's not that one. It's Red and Beard. Hit B I. Oh wait. Nope, that's different. Not that one. Yeah, 
because his are called yeah just IMM primitives. That's all it's called. I'm sure. No, that's these not ones. His. Wait, did I actually? Because his are his are red beard. So hit B again. That's weird. Cause I thought I grabbed the the right one. I mean, there's stuff in the way, so I can't, like, RB cube mesh. Yeah, you click away from it. So hit B, R. Oh, see, RB. I see it. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so B... BRQ. BRQ. Okay, okay. So see, now up top, he had his thrusters. Now he has thrusters. <laughs> <laughs> that could be entertaining. <laughs> right. He is now a League of Legends character. <laughs> right? <laughs> So it's BRQ is basically going to bring you up his stuff. Yeah, I forgot that and I was going to remove the IMM primitives and swap it out for that. I forgot about that. Because I had to re-download all, all of his brushes back into here, so. Yeah. Ugh. But that's what I'm saying is, like, if you go through and you learn the shortcut... That's going to help you so much, and it's going to be a lot faster, too. Because otherwise, you're, you're having to take your right hand and move over to your side. And it's kind of breaking concentration a little bit. Yeah, I know what you mean. The only issue, the only reason I do have some of them on the side is because I fumble my keys so much. Yeah, no, and... I get it. I mean, you know, it is nice to have them there, but it's like BMT for move topological. Yeah, and I use that, that one I have so like, much. like I got that one freaking down. most of the time like most like the way I have I hit it I hit it with my ring finger hit it with my index mm -hmm. then hit T with my right my middle no middle finger index finger middle finger like that's how I do it whenever I do it and that's as solid as I got it <laughs> no dude all you have my to keyboard do is, is not keyboard. crap Sarah do not complain about my keyboard <laughs> I love my keyboard <laughs> Aside from this gigantic uh, cable that is plugged into this thing. That is the only thing I don't like about it. <laughs> so if you did B with your ring finger, M with your index, and T with your ring finger. It's my middle finger and my index finger is the ones I hit. It's those two. Yeah, but... If you use your ring finger for B, your index for oh, M. Oh, I see what you mean. And your ring finger for T, it's more comfortable. Yeah, you're not wrong. So I did talk to Sarah's dad, actually. I did talk to her, talk to her dad recently about potentially helping me build a stand for my mod for mm -hmm. my uh display tablet yeah he's down for it he's he's willing to help me out um cool like i gave him like my initial blueprints of like this is kind of what i'm thinking of doing mm -hmm. um i gave him my measurements that i that i wrote down and everything so hope probably it probably won't be anytime soon because you know how the weather is lately so but um yeah, I know it was seventy here, and it was fifty. So, 
it, it was around <laughs> in the 50s, almost 60s here for a good week. Now that all the tornadoes are done over in the Midwest, now it's freaking cold again. <laughs> you have to keep in mind, dude, I'm in Texas. <laughs> like, the last two days have been close to 80 degrees. And when you say, you know how the weather's been, no, I don't. <laughs> because I've been in shorts and a t-shirt. Yesterday, I actually had the door open and the windows open. <laughs> and considering going up to, we have a uh, rooftop. Uh, it's like a rooftop saltwater pool with a common area and stuff up there. I showed you that picture, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. So that area up there, I was thinking about going up there and like dropping my feet into the uh, saltwater pool area. <laughs> I, I bet the weather up there is pretty bad common. Like... Have, like because of where I am in in Michigan, we nat we naturally don't get jack. Everybody up north does. <laughs> like we live in a valley here where I live, and it's like whenever we wish for a snow day, it's like snow day, please come, please. No, it goes right around us. It's like screw you. It's like come on. <laughs> like nowadays, it's like. You, you can't even wish for it now because of the way uh, climate change has really screwed up uh, uh, the weather lately. Like, the Midwest just recently had a massive tornado blow through. A massive chain of tornadoes or whatever blow through the Midwest. Took out an Amazon warehouse. Like, blew half of it apart, I dude. Saw that. that was nuts. Like, in December, mind you. Tornadoes in December. What the hell? <laughs> like, if that if this isn't a wake up call for climate change, I don't know what is, man. <laughs> it's like we shouldn't be having this kind of weather during December. Like, come on. Snowstorms are one thing, but this is this is getting ridiculous. There you go, dude. There's something for you. No, dude. You want to know what's worse? <laughs> you want to know what's worse? Amazon told them they couldn't leave. Amazon told them they couldn't leave during the tornado. <laughs> well, that that's actually a bad idea to leave during a tornado. Well, no, no, no. Like, before it even got there, like, anywhere, before it was even near them. Yeah, because, I mean, if you think about that... <laughs> If you if you let people leave when a tornado is a, well a tornado warning is in effect, then how far are these people driving? Well, the yeah, thing is, it's like people... well, it wasn't even that. It was more like they threatened them if they left, they would be fired. That was actually the thing, like. Like if they if people wanted to get out and go and be with their you know make sure that their families were all right and whatever, and try to help their families like, like, they they just said fuck you no, <laughs> you, you can't, <laughs> you will be fired which I think is kind of extreme. Like we had a tor like when we had our our massive tornado come through, we didn't actually have a tornado but there was like bad warnings. Uh, here my brother lives or my brother was working at the time down in at Dow Chemical like at yeah. least they let them leave like as soon as they heard that oh the tornado is like on the paths to the plant yeah you guys can leave stop what you're doing get the hell out of here <laughs> we're gonna shut things down a little bit and then you get out <laughs> like <laughs> Granted, you don't want to be in a chemical plant when a freaking tornado's going through it. Like, that's just insanity right there. But yeah. Like, I definitely understand not letting people leave.
for safety reasons. I can understand that, but threatening people to that if they left, they'd lose their job is really overkill. It's overkill, but I mean, you know, some people don't listen, especially people that haven't been in tornadoes. And it's kind of like the uh, the issue with people over in New Orleans, where they're like, "Yeah, you know, there's a hurricane coming. We can, you know, we live through this one. We can live through the next one." Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that. All right. I think I made some pretty good progress on here, guys. Um, I'm pretty sure dinner's gonna be ready here soon, or is probably already done. One of the two. So I am probably gonna jump off here and be back on tomorrow. Um, I'm definitely gonna try to shoot for two o'clock. Hopefully, I nobody comes to me tomorrow and is like, "Hey, we gotta do stuff tomorrow." Hopefully, that doesn't happen. But uh, I am <laughs> FedEx you dinner. I'm sorry, but if I tried, it probably would be a lot of money. <laughs> On your end and my end. More, mostly my end, because I'm shipping it. But, um... Hey, check out, <clears throat> check out the uh, Discord for a second. It looks like Leshy from Inscription. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I kind of figured you wouldn't know what it is, but it almost looks like a what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a tree witch. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're gonna hop in the the, the thing, Sarah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I will definitely be on tomorrow, guys. Hopefully around two. Um, as far as I know, I don't have anything going on tomorrow, so I should be able to jump back in and get, get cracking on this a little bit more. Um, we're still kind of blocking out a lot of the details here. Um, it's definitely getting there for sure. I, I still need to figure out what I want to do for the legs and adding in some of the, the, the twig designs and stuff, uh, the rough twig shapes and stuff into the character, so at least they're blocked out. But uh, so far, this is definitely going the right direction that I wanted to go with this character. Um, once he's, once it is basically in a state where it's pretty much done, I want to pose it. And I want to get into a state where we can start figuring out how it's going to set up with this stand. So, um, yeah, this is good. this this character is definitely becoming a lot of fun. So, I will see you guys tomorrow, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Keep on creating, keep on having fun, and I'll see y'all later.